Hey, Fran. Yeah? Do you want to see my quilt top? I do. Do you want to see my quilt top? Well, you got to keep watching. Hi, it's Fran Morgan with Fabric Cafe, and I am here with... Hannah Johnson. And Hannah, you have your quilt finished. I do. I want to see it. I'm super excited. I really, really do. Okay. <gasps> Oh, wow, you did such an amazing job. Look at all these great corners that you put together. Hannah, this is really, really good. Thank you. What we want to do is go ahead and we're going to invite our long arm quilter, Lucinda, to come in and visit with you. Oh, cool. About backings and batting and all mm -hmm. of that kind of things and what we need to do to prepare your quilt for her. All right, because what better expert than the person who does the quilting? Absolutely. So mm -hmm. let's get Lucinda in here and visit with her. Okay. So we are here with our long arm quilter, Lucinda. Now, Lucinda, you've been with us doing the Fabric Cafe quilting for how long? Oh, I think about 18 to 24 months. Mm -hmm. It feels like it feels like longer. Lucinda's been here since I got here, and it's she's just always been a staple for me. It's just part of our Fabric Cafe family. Tell us a little bit about yourself and your business. Well, I am own Yellow Rose Quilt and Stitch Studio, mm -hmm. and um, I started quilting in 2002 mm -hmm. when a friend of mine in Austin, Texas, opened a quilt store. I knew nothing about quilting. Mm -hmm. She introduced me to fabrics and all the fun notions, and I loved how you could cut fabric up and sew it back together and make these mm -hmm. beautiful quilt tops. Mm -hmm. So I'd take my quilt tops to a long armor to have them long armed, mm -hmm. and I was kind of very intrigued by those long arm machines. Yeah. Now outside of quilting, I worked in technology um, and I was in software development. So that's why the long arm machines really appealed. They did, and yeah. when they really appealed was when they became computerized. Oh. So my head kind of blew up and I was uh -huh. like, oh, I can marry my love of technology with my love of quilting. Yeah. And that's how I um, came about becoming a long arm quilter. I purchased a machine in 2016 Mm -hmm. and it was computerized. I also purchased some extra software that allows me to digitize uh, my own patterns. Oh, wow, that's really neat. Yep, and I opened a business after that. Wow. I provide quilting services for the public. That's awesome. What are the, the supplies, the tools that I need to get together to send to my long arm? You need your quilt top. Okay. You need batting mm -hmm. and you need your backing material. Okay. What about thread? Do I need to supply that or do you supply your own? Most long arm quilters are gonna supply their own mm -hmm. thread. You can talk to them about thread color, mm -hmm. but quilters like to use their own thread because they know what works well on their long arm quilting machine. That makes sense. Then let's let's kind of talk about those a little bit then. Make sure I have all the right stuff. Okay. So I have a quilt top. Yes. This is so that here she is completed. It's beautiful. Thank you. You'll wanna make sure that you've pressed all your seams. Okay and that you've pressed your quilt top in general. Do you have a preference? This is a big debate. Do you have a preference on pressing your seams open or to the dark side? Um, I don't really have a preference, but just as long as you're doing it consistently. Okay, so that, that helps. It yes. lays flat. That I'm lays assuming flat. laying flat is yes. very important. Yes, it is. Okay. And then let's say you didn't have this border on your quilt right here, and you mm -hmm. just had these nice little uh, pieces that came on the edge. Mm -hmm. As a um, quilter, I would ask you, before you take it to your long armor, to sew one eighth of an inch. So just right on the very edge around the quilt top mm -hmm. because it won't let these seams, you have a lot of seams here that could mm -hmm. open up. That'll keep those seams shut so that they won't open up. Okay. Because when you put the quilt on the long arm, but your long armor's gonna kind of pull it and stretch it and you don't mm -hmm. want those seams to pop open. Okay. So then I, if you had a, a pieced bat, um, border too, that yes, would be important. That would be a thing to you, do. Yes. If you did something fancy. Okay. All right. So so I'm good on that. I don't need to worry about that. It sounds yep. like quilt top step check. Yep. Yep. That looks good. All right. Batting. You said was next. Batting. Um, for your batting, you want your batting to be four inches longer and four inches wider than your quilt top all the way around. So that okay. means eight inches longer overall, eight inches wider. I think that's an okay. easier way to think about it. Yeah, just so, total. Yes, total eight inches longer and wider. Okay. And that's because your quilter is gonna quilt off the quilt top onto the mm -hmm. edges 
and not all quilt tops are square, I hate to tell you, and not all batting is square, uh -huh. so that extra batting lets you make sure you have enough for the whole okay. quilt. Okay. Do you have preference on what batting you use? Um, I use an 80-20 batting, which is 80% mm -hmm. cotton, 20% polyester. I think it's good to buy a high quality batting because mm -hmm. you get better results than with some of maybe the lower end battings. Okay. When I send you my batting, do I need to worry about any crinkles or wrinkles or anything like that? If it's really wrinkled, you might want to press it. You can press okay. it using a cotton iron with steam. Okay. If it's just got a few little wrinkles in it, mm -hmm. it should be okay. Okay, it won't show up? No. Okay. And then I need your backing also. Okay, your backing. Okay. And your backing, like the batting, needs to be eight inches longer and eight mm -hmm. inches wider. Mm -hmm. Now, it can be bigger than that if you'd like it to be. Okay. Um, but but it needs to be at least eight inches longer and um, wider. And the reason for that is when I load a quilt on the on the quilt on the long arm machine, mm -hmm. I'm using these little red snappers, and I take part of the material to load the back on. So mm -hmm. I lose inches there on the top and the bottom, and I roll it on. And then on the side, I use side clamps. And mm -hmm. so if the, I use that extra four inches to side clamp the side so that your back remains smooth underneath while I'm doing the quilting. Okay. What about pressing on that one? <laughs> you want to press your backing also. Okay. Um, and then you also, if you have a directional fabric on your backing, it's yeah. great to put a little safety pin up at the top so that okay. your quilter knows what the top of that backing is. That is a great tidbit to know because I do happen to have a directional backing for this quilt. Oh, good. My first backing and I chose to do directional. Well, that's your, you're up for a challenge uh, here. I guess so. I don't know what I was thinking, but it's so pretty and I think you're really going to like it. I can't wait to see it. <laughs> okay, well, I'm going to go get all of my things together and I'll be right back. Okay, great. Okay, so we're ready to do the backing. Awesome. So did Lucinda give you some good tips? Yes, she did. Um, she told me that it was very important you had eight extra inches uh, in total. And that's, that means you get four on either side. Which makes sense because you gotta you gotta put it on the machine and right. then have extra. Also, yeah. I feel like that gives us wiggle room too, because <laughs> it doesn't have to be perfect. Definitely. <laughs> so anytime. I like yep. Anytime we can do that, that's great. So this is the fabric that you've chosen for your backing. Yes. Oh. Now it's directional, and that's okay. It's a so, different animal. It's okay because we have a instructional sheet on our free goodies tab and it completely will step through how to cut your directional backing for your lap quilt. So mm -hmm. it's perfect. So we have our four yards of fabric here. Mm -hmm. Now we do have it draped off the end of the table mm -hmm. here. And just look at how yummy and that is. It is so, so, so <laughs> yummy. It is so yummy. And we do have it folded in half. Now what mm -hmm. you can't see here is the raw ends of the four yards are matching and we have mm -hmm. our fold here and then we also have our fold this is how it came off the bolt so mm -hmm. it's still folded in half mm -hmm. and then it's the whole four yards is folded in half and we're just going to cut this into two pieces okay oh so i can just cut the um just cut the fold off and it automatically is two pieces yes <laughs> perfect so easy. That's easy. The really, really great thing about backing is you do want to take care and get it as precise as you can, although as long as it's straight, edges are not quite as important because it is that extra that the long arm is going to be putting on the machine. Those edges will be trimmed once it's quilted. Do I want to get as close to the end as I possibly can? It looks like you're doing great. It looks like a quarter inch is probably good there. Make sure that you get through all four layers of fabric so that you okay. end up with two pieces. All right. Full body cutting. Uh -huh. I feel like we might need to wait for this one. <laughs> okay, so we have two pieces now. Okay. We're gonna take one of them and fold it up and set it aside for now. Okay. So on our directional instruct, our directional fabric instructions, um, it will tell you, step you through all of this so you know exactly what you need to do. So here we have our second piece. Mm -hmm. Now I want to point out to everyone there and to you, mm -hmm. this is a gradated fabric. Mm -hmm. And basically what that means is at this edge of the selvage, it's lighter mm -hmm. and I'm just gonna fold it over and show them. Mm. On the other selvage edge, it's darker. So in your case, we're gonna have to make sure that we do some adjustments once mm -hmm. we start sewing it together. But 
very simple, we can take care of that. So now what we're gonna do is our instructions tell us to cut two eight inch wide pieces along the selvaged edge. To make this easy again, uh -huh. we're gonna fold like it in easy. half <laughs> and match those two raw edges there. Okay. Okay, and now we wanna line it up square on our table. Okay. So we're gonna take the folded edge and line it up on one of the inch lines. Okay. All right, and because we're gonna be cutting eight inches off of the selvage side, um, our six inch wide ruler doesn't quite work. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna grab the square. The way that I cut my backings, because we're working with such big pieces of fabric and mm -hmm. big measurements and everything, is once I have it lined up on a uh, edge over here on a one inch line, then I can use my square and line up on an inch line on this side so that it keeps it even on the fabric. Gotcha, okay. okay. So we need um, at least eight inches cut off of the selvage edge here. Mm -hmm. So what I would recommend is putting the nine mm -hmm. on the line, that way we know we have eight inches into the fabric. And then we'll just have to shift our square, unfortunately, in this <laughs> case. And I'll please see if I can do that well. <laughs> yeah, and remember, this is a backing. We do want a nice straight edge when we sew it together. But once it's quilted, it will be squared up, so. That's true, it is nice to know like, yeah, you wanna get it done well, but right. at the same time, you do have a little wiggle room. Absolutely, so nice straight edge here. This is scary. <laughs> Okay, perfect cuts, great. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna set this piece aside and then we're gonna bring back that very first piece that we cut. Okay. Okay, now let's look at the two pieces that you have there. Okay, so you have one piece that is a dark and one piece that is a light. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when we start sewing these together, mm -hmm. we wanna make sure that we put the light side on the light side and the dark side on the dark side. Okay. Okay. We need to cut the selvages off this main piece. Okay. And this is the first piece that we set aside. Okay. And We're, then do we wait to cut the selvages off of these until? Right, actually we are not gonna cut the selvages off of these. These oh. are good for the long arm quilter, I believe. Uh -huh. So we'll just keep those on. Oh. And once it's quilted, it'll be trimmed off. Oh, fabulous. I okay. like that. <laughs> Okay, and so I'm just doing the selvage, so I can just come in here. Yeah, that one and a quarter, we'll go ahead and take that off, or even one and a half if you wanted to be a little extra generous. Okay. And what I'm saying, what that measurement is, is oh, we're see, gotcha. finding a line on the table and then getting it lined up on a line on the ruler so we're sure to cut all of that selvage off. Yeah, yeah, okay, I see that. Okay. And we are nice and straight. Now it's time to sew the backing, Ooh. the little two pieces to the side of the backing. Okay. Okay. So. So here's our other pieces. Do we need to unfold this? We will to sew it. So we'll okay. need to go ahead and get it pinned together. Okay. So, and let's just lay it out real quick so everybody can get Sorry, a concept. Sorry audience. <laughs> it was 3D for a second there. <laughs> Well, it is, a, they're big pieces to <laughs> work with. They are. So here's our light piece that we'll be sewing on the light side. Okay. So, this, wow. So what we do is we just, we pin the side that does not have the selvage on to this. Correct. We'll like flip this over, making sure the dark is with the dark, the light is with the light. Right. Pin that and then sew it? Right. Now, okay. also remember, if you if you at home are working on a directional fabric that s s has a little happy face or heart or something like that, make mm. sure that your side panels are turned the same direction as your centerpiece mm -hmm. so that when you sew them on, it works. Yeah. Okay, so they're all going the same direction whenever you see the back of the quilt. Yeah, because that would be really sad if like all of these are going the right direction and then this panel is <laughs> going the wrong direction. <laughs> gotcha. Okay, okay. well, okay. I'm gonna pin these together and get sewing and then I'll 
come grab you when I'm done. Okay, Fran, it's done. It's great. Can we see it? Yeah. Wonderful. I'm so excited about it. It looks amazing. I just love the fabric you chose, and I think the way that it's gradated, it turned out perfect yeah. with the, the extra pieces on the side. I'm so excited. I'm too short to hold it all. <laughs> it is a rather big piece, so whenever you're doing your backings, take your time. It can get a little bulky. Yeah. And then on your seams, uh, how did Lucinda want you to do those seams? Oh, yeah. So Lucinda wanted me to press them uh, to one side. So I pressed them Great. flat and used a lot of best pressed so that best press <laughs> so that I could get it nice and flat so that it's ready for her. And I also ironed out um, any big wrinkles I found. Well, it looks great. You did a wonderful job. Thank you. Time to get it to Lucinda? Yeah. Okay, so I have all of my supplies. I did my backing. So here's my quilt top. I folded it up. And just to kind of reiterate some points you made earlier, Lucinda, my quilt top is 43 and a half by 58 and a half. So I have my batting, which is 64 by 67. It's way more than eight extra inches. Ours comes off in rolls at Fabric Cafe. We just have a big old roll of batting that you pull off and cut, and it's just naturally 64 inches. Okay. And then you cut your length. Um, you might want to check when you're um, taking your quilt to your long arm. Some mm -hmm. long armors uh, provide batting. So okay. I provide batting in my um, business. Oh, um, okay. So you might want to check because they may be able to have something that's a little bit less wide than that. Okay. And is, that's a good thing to know because, I mean, I don't know how easy batting is to get a hold of. I haven't been in the quilting game that long. It seems convenient though. You can just it's convenient if you just have a top and a back and you don't want to mm -hmm. go to the store to get batting. Mm -hmm. You can just ask your long armor if they check. provide it. Okay, perfect. Will, will it being really long be a problem at all? It's not a problem at all. Okay. <laughs> okay, batting. <laughs> Done. And now I have my backing. So... Um, I'll push this outside just for a second. It is directional, okay. so it's just got this nice um, ombre kind of effect. And I put my little safety pin at the top. That's perfect. So that that'll it'll let me go know. Light to dark. Yeah, very nice. So we want to talk about what you want to put on your quilt top. Yes, I do. So we have some um, mostly for Fabric Cafe. I've been doing mm -hmm. edge to edge design. So there's mm -hmm. two types of designs you can. Um, use when you talk to your long arm quilter. Mm -hmm. An edge to edge design is a design that quilts from left to right. It goes across mm -hmm. the entire quilt top and then the quilter will roll up to the next row and quilt from left to right oh. again. And that's uh -huh. called edge to edge. Okay. There's also custom quilting. Mm -hmm. And custom quilting is when you would like say I want to put something in one block or we're mm -hmm. going to put one thing in the border or we're going to put something else on a block. And oh. in, so anything that's not edge to edge mm -hmm. is custom quilting. Okay. So um, I'm thinking you're going to want edge to edge for this I quilt. I think that sounds fantastic. <laughs> now in uh, my quilting business, what I do for both edge to edge and for custom quilting mm -hmm. is um, that extra piece of software I bought that lets me digitize. I can take a picture of your quilt top and I can say, you know, um, in that picture in the software, I can identify from here to here is three inches. And so then that gives me the scale of that picture. Mm -hmm. And I can overlay quilt top designs on top of your quilt so that you can have some idea of what your quilting is going to look like before you get it. So you can actually see it completed. Oh. Yes. And so, well, you know, what it's going to look like. Simulated. Completed. Completed. Yes. Completed. Yeah. And Close I enough. show those designs in a contrasting color so you can mm -hmm. see, you know, what the quilting would look mm -hmm. like. But when I do the actual quilting, I try to choose a thread color that's going to mm -hmm. blend. Okay. So um, I and how I choose my designs, unless you know exactly what you want, do you mm -hmm. know what you want? I don't. <laughs> okay. So what okay. I like to do is take a cues from my quilt top. So you've got mm -hmm. some flowers here, so I'll probably send you a flower um, design. Okay. And I send all these pictures and email to you. Okay, perfect. So that you can look at them, and I put just a single picture of the quilt design next to, you've got your picture with the design all over it, and then mm -hmm. I just put a picture of the design without anything, so you, so can, you can kind of see it. See it. Yes. Oh, neat. Cool. So I'll probably do a floral. Mm -hmm. You've got these dots, these paint dots, so mm -hmm. I might see if I've got anything that's got some dots in it, because that would be something that's kind of fun. Ooh, I and like And then that. <laughs> I'll pick one more thing, kind of uh -huh. looking at this, that I think will look good. Yeah. And I'll send those to you in email. Oh, perfect. Oh, I'm excited. 
Yeah. Have you thought about thread color? Yeah. So, you know, okay, so I, I've seen thread that's multicolor. Well, that's called variegated thread. Okay, variegated thread. Mm -hmm. Do you have like a green or kind of a green, yellow, purpley, yes, picking up these colors of variegated thread? I don't have a variegated thread. Okay. I do have some green threads that I think might look nice on this. Okay. And what I can do is like overlay them on your quilt top and send you some pictures of those green Aww. threads so you can pick which one you like the best. Oh, cool. Okay. Well then, what's the best way to send it to your long arm quilter? Well, I think it's best to put your quilt top, your backing, if you've got batting, all together in a mm -hmm. bag or in fabric cafes. They, we use pillowcases here, which I love. <laughs> And then put your name on that so I know okay. that it's yours. Perfect. Okay. I think that's all we need for me to get started. I and how so. about I send you an email in about a week to week and a half with some ideas and we can go yeah. from there. Sounds perfect. Okay. Sounds great. All right. So Lucinda sent me an email where she sent me three different quilting designs for me to look at. Um, what she did is she put the, the design on top of the quilt, like an image of the quilt, and she did it in black thread so that I could really tell what the design was. So the first one she sent me was Champagne Bubbles. And immediately, I already really like this one. It's very fun, it's very whimsical. Um, I think the it's all of these fun bubbly dots and it. To me, it kind of um, reflects the little paint splatters. Kind of looks like that to me. So that's really fun. Uh, second one, this one's called Daisy Doodle. And this one has lots of pretty daisies and swirls, and it also has little dots, so I like that. It highlights the flowers more in the quilt, so I guess that's something very interesting to think about. Your quilting, you know, depending on what you pick, can highlight different things in your quilt, depending on which one. And the final one, this is, this is something that Lucinda and I talked about after uh, she left last time. My sister is, uh, a very talented singer and music is a huge part of her life. So I, and that's who I'm making this quilt for. I don't think I ever told you that. So there you go. Surprise. Quilt is for my sister. And um, I asked if Lucinda had any quilting that had music notes. So she sent me this one. It's called Loops with Music. And it's got lots of music notes and some swirls. I like the homage to my sister and her music. The one that brought me the most joy when I looked at it was the champagne bubbles. It just is so whimsical and it's so fun. And my sister's pretty whimsical, just like me. And so I, I think it's my favorite. So I think I'm gonna go email Lucinda and let her know this is it. I want this one, it's perfect. And I'm so excited. It was so much fun seeing these designs on the quilt and seeing how it's going to be brought to life. Yay! It's here! It's here, Lucinda, Yay! you brought it! I did! Do you want to see it? Yes. <laughs> here it is! I, already I'm loving the back. I, You know, when you, your quilt is away from you for a while, it's almost like you're seeing it with new eyes. Yes. Oh, oh, oh. Oh! It's so pretty. Look at that. You can see all the pretty circles. We'll put that up on the table and get a closer look of it. It's so nice. I think that that green picked up all of these other details so well and I love this design. This one is, it felt so whimsical and joyful to me whenever mm -hmm. I saw it. And I think it really picks up the, the speckly paint flashes. Yep, it does. Picks up those circles very nicely. Well, that looks awesome. And then on the back, we can take a look at that too. Oh, that's pretty. Yep, we use gray thread on the back. And you know, I didn't, did not know until um, working at Fabric Cafe that you use a different color thread on the front than on the back. You don't That's, always have to, and not mm -hmm. all quilters do, but I do. And what, what is your reasoning behind that? How did you come to start doing that? 
Well, I um, I use uh, pre-wound bobbin, and mm -hmm. um, I have six or eight colors, and they pretty much go with all different backs. And so mm -hmm. I kind of like to match the back threads with the back and the front threads with the front. That's awesome. An awesome attention to detail, too. Thank you so much, Lucinda. I'm so excited. I can't wait to, to get started on the finishing touches. Where do people find you? You can find me at Yellow Rose Quilt and Stitch. That's, I have a website. And you can also find me at the bottom of this video. There should be a link to my website too. Yeah, so check her out. She does awesome, awesome work. I am so excited. Um, join us next time and you'll see me learn how to trim my quilt, find it and get it all finished up and ready to package up for my sister. Woohoo! Thank you, Lucinda. You're welcome. Be sure to like and subscribe and we'll see you next time.